And in order to see some geometry about this, I would like to multiply by delta t all the sides. And the equality I get, well, approximate equality is delta a approximately equal to delta x times y plus x times delta y. And what I claim is that now we can see geometrically what that means. You probably don't see what this original differential equality means, but that one you can see. So what does it mean? It means that what if we change x and the width becomes bigger? And what if the change of y makes it bigger? Then what happens to the rectangle is it becomes that big. And this, the final rectangle, is the So what, what is delta A? So let's let's focus on the left hand side. The change. It's the change in the area. And now we can visualize it. Right, this change in the area is the difference between the final rectangle minus the original rectangle. Now what about the right hand side? Can we see that? What about delta x times y? What about this one? Where is it on the picture? If you look at, where is delta x? There. It's exactly there. And what if I multiply delta x by y? I get a rectangle right here. What about the second term, x times delta y? Well, we can definitely see delta y. And if you multiply that by x, we can see another narrow rectangle. And its area is the second term. And what the product rule says, approximately, is that the change of area is approximately equal to the sum of these two rectangles. Now, is it ever exact? Never. Right? Because we always have that remaining rectangle. So that's exactly why that equality is never equality. It is always approximate equality. And to make that a sensible equality statement, we have to take the limit and talk about limiting process. And then in the limit, we have equality. Why is it that we have equality in the limit? If we never have equality in the, well, before, before taking the limit. Well, the reason is that what kind of limit is it that we take? We make all the deltas go to zero, right? That's the meaning of the limit that we take here uh, for differentiation. But if we take, if we make delta x go to zero, keeping x the same. If you make delta y go to zero, keeping y the same. Can you see what's going on? So the, the whole thing here becomes very narrow and how come that approximate equality will become better? Well, because these two rectangles, the red one and the blue one, will occupy most of the remaining area delta A. And that little rectangle, and by the way, we can 
explicitly say what the area is of that rectangle. Right? This rectangle has area delta x times delta y. That area will be negligibly small in comparison to any of those. So in this example, we can see what the exact equality should be. Delta A should be equal to delta x times y plus x times delta y plus delta x times delta y. And what happens in the limit is that this term becomes so small that it's negligible in comparison to that. So we totally neglect that term. Now, what's, uh, what can be an explanation for that? Because we have delta x here, like a small term here, a small term there, a small term here. Why would we neglect numerically this term in comparison to those two? There are, no con there are no constants, yes. I can add a constant for you, uh, if you wish. If I, even if I have to multiply by 3, I would still neglect that. Because it's going to 0. Because it's going to 0, well, this is going to 0 as well. And that is going to 0 as well. It's going to faster. It's going to 0 faster. Why is it going faster? How, how, do, how do you think about one term going to zero slow and one term going to zero fast. Why do you think it's going to zero faster? In, in calculus, you just take derivative of a, of a limit to find which one goes to zero faster. But here you can just say that because both of them x is going to, delta x is going to zero and delta y is going to zero, both of them product the product will go to zero much faster, it will be exponential, while del delta x times y is linear. So you can say that. All right, so now you see uh, linear dependence on delta x here. So this term depends on delta x linearly and doesn't depend on delta y. That term de depends linearly on delta y, but not on delta x. And this term depends on delta x linearly, on delta y linearly, but on delta t, it depends quadratic way. So, in other words, uh, if you make delta x small, like 10 to the power negative 3, is that small for you? 1 over 1,000. Is it convincing? It's small number. Uh, you make delta y small. 10 to the power negative 4. How oh, it's also small for you, right? So this term will be 10 to the power what? Negative 7. And you see how much smaller this term in comparison to those are. It is. So that's the computation way of explaining why this term goes to 0 faster than any of those two. This is a geometric way, and whether you can see it or not, that rectangle is much smaller in comparison to both of those, or any of those. And so uh, that is what we will practice for the whole semester. Essentially, uh, looking at the phenomena and figuring out what's important about it. Figuring out important terms that are very simple and disregarding those that contribute just a little bit. And the first example that we will see of this kind of analysis is going to be Taylor series. Taylor series will consist of some of infinitely many terms. Have you heard of Taylor series in calc? two probably, right? So it consists of infinitely many terms. And the meaning of those terms is similar to these. You will have linear terms making very essential contribution. 
you will have a quadratic term following that, contributing less, but contributing much more than a cubic term that follows, which contributes much more than fourth degree term, fifth degree term, and, and it goes forever. And then it's up to you where to stop making your approximation and deciding, OK, well, this is important to me. I will disregard the rest. Or everything up to here is important. I will disregard the rest. OK, so let's go back to distributivity, because that was the topic. And this product rule was an example. And what I made is a link to geometry. And this is what I will do all the time. I will make links between different problems, between different concepts, between different areas of mathematics, and also between mathematics and physics, whenever I feel comfortable about it. <coughs>